Hey, good morning. Welcome to Celebration of Life Online Church. Hey, we're so excited that you are with us this morning. Thank you so much uh, for setting aside time to spend time with God today. Uh, you are going to encounter Him. You're going to encounter His presence because He loves you more than you can imagine. And so thank you so much for being on with us. We hope you had an amazing week. Uh, go ahead and share this. If you're on Facebook, uh, share it. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel. And you can hit that little bell notification icon uh, so that you can get more of our videos. Um, let's go ahead and declare our vision together. We want to remind ourselves why we are here, why we're doing this this morning. So just repeat after me. Say, we are a place that welcomes the healing presence of Jesus for a broken world. We exist to see the lost found and the hurting healed. We are created to worship, so we raise a sound with our songs and with our lives. Come on, let's worship together this morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? Are we ready to worship the Lord this morning? I just want to read the word of the Lord over us this morning. I said this and spoke this this morning to our leaders in our huddle. Psalms chapter 133, many of us know this scripture. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. I told our leaders today, this is such a true picture of Celebration of Life Church. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, they were with one mind and one accord. And suddenly, everybody say suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And amen. And it filled the house where they were sitting. So let's worship the Lord today, because when we do, when we come together in unity, God commands a blessing upon the house. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Well, let's worship Jesus together. We love you this morning, God. We love you this morning, Lord Jesus. Oh, we raise a sound to you this morning, God. Sing this with us. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. Yes, I do. I have resurrection power. Feel the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Yes, it is. Oh, my name belongs to you forever. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify yeah. by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Hey! Yes, it is. Let's celebrate this morning. Hey! Come together. Come together, sons and daughters. Yeah. Bought with the blood and washed with water. Yeah. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. What he started. We believe that this morning. Oh, our God will finish what he started. Oh, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll test, I'll sing it out. Oh, by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. Oh, this is my testimony. This is my testimony. Testimony this morning. 
you're not done Well, that's the truth Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe If I'm not dead, then you're not done Come on, do you believe that? Hey! Greater things are still to come Oh, I Sing it out! If I'm not dead, then you're not done No, you're not God Oh! Greater things are still to come status change when I was born again. It wasn't just a status change. I didn't just go from guilty to forgiven. And I'm so grateful that I went from guilty to forgiven. But something way deeper happened. I had an identity change. Amen? I went from orphan to son. See, someone can take your status away from you, because they, but they can't take your identity away from you this morning. I was reading in John chapter 15 this morning. Jesus said, he says, As the Father loved me, so have I loved you. We were talking with our team this morning. That one sentence is enough fuel for you to live the rest of your life. The intense, amazing love of the Father that the Father had for Jesus, Jesus and the Father has for you. Come on, are you excited about that this morning? That if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior today, the Father sees you through the lens of Christ. He sees you as you were meant to be this morning. So today, let's just, I just want us to receive God's love today. I just want you to raise your hands to Him. God, we just thank you that your love is not achieved, it's received this morning. So we just open up our hands. Come on. We just, we... We bring all of our fears, our worries, our failures to you this morning. We thank you that you're faithful and just to forgive us. We confess our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness this morning. We thank you, Father God, we come to you and we receive your love this morning. You are faithful this morning, God. Come on, just receive it today. He loves you. Thank you, Jesus, you're so good.
faithful you are never gonna leave us or forsake us all your promises are yes and amen all your promises are yes and amen judged by those you had created the wonder of it all the wonder of it all and in the darkness of that final moment stripped and beaten the king of kings now broken blood was poured winning our atonement wonder of it all, the wonder of it all. What seemed a sure defeat would be your victory.
receive it this morning. He loves you. You're extravagant love. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Pour out our song to you.
if you could come and lead us in communion. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, stay in a posture of worship right now. Holy Spirit, we love you. <laughs> we love your presence. that he paid and we're thankful that's the, that's the form of worship that we can always do we can be there, you can't be over thankful did you know that you can't, you, there's no such thing you can thank him all the time he doesn't mind so we can thank him on continually for what he's done and then believe that what he did is what we can have today because of what he did Everything we pray, everything we believe, everything we receive came through what Jesus did on the cross. So it's very powerful. He wants to uh, bring beauty for your ashes this morning, joy for your pain, gladness for your mourning, peace for your despair. Is that Isaiah 61? Or? Yeah. That's for somebody. And he does it. I just want to say an encouraging word that God uh, is never gives up on you. He sees you at the best. That's the way he sees you. At your best. And be better than we see ourselves. He, he loves us more than anybody will ever love us. He never forsakes you, gives up on you, gives up on you changes his mind about you. He'll never leave you ever, ever. And his grace is sufficient his grace is sufficient for every situation. And you say, well, I can't do this. You're right, you can't. God's grace is sufficient. God gives you the help, the strength, whatever you need. You don't have to be strong enough. He's going to be strong in you. So we thank you for your body, Lord, that was torn, whipped, beaten, bloodied, despised and rejected by men so that we might receive divine health, peace, love and joy in our hearts. We thank you for your body. And we thank you for your blood that washes and cleanses us, causes us to come into a new covenant of relationship with you. Cleanses our bloodline, takes away our sins, takes away our iniquities of the past. They have no power over us. We have the power through the blood to cleanse our bloodline. So we thank you for that. We thank you for the blood that drinks, brings us near to you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Come on, let's take a minute and just continue to love on him right now. His love is so strong in this place. His presence is so, so wonderful. If you've never known what it's like to encounter God in an intimate way, face to face, to where you encounter his presence, our deepest desire for you as your pastors is that you have that encounter with God. It will change your life. You'll never be the same again. And if you want that this morning, even now, when, when maybe people say God's presence is here and you don't feel it, I, if that's you, if you want to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit this morning, I, I really challenge you to kind of lean in this morning. Because I believe today you're not going to leave this place without encountering the Holy Spirit and His presence in your life. So just press in and lean in with us today. Hey guys, we want to take a moment and worship God with our tithes and our offerings uh, today. Tithing is quite simply a covenant with God. It's saying, God, I trust you with every area of my life, including my finances. Uh, the Bible says, test me in this. God says, uh, a return to me a tenth uh, of what I have given you and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you can't even contain. Everything we have came from God. Every good thing in your life was given to you from him. 
And so we just return that tenth as a sign unto God saying, God, I trust you. And I know that you're my provider, uh, not anyone else. God, you are my provider and I trust you. I'm in covenant with you. So we encourage you to do that today. Uh, give unto the Lord with joy and knowing that he will bless you. I want to pray for you today as you give. You can give online, colbaytown.com. Uh, there's a little blue circle uh, that says give on it. And you can click that and give. You can also give physically by mailing in uh, to the P.O. box uh, below. As you're doing that, let me go ahead and pray for you this morning. God, I bless your people right now. I thank you, Lord, that we're in a relationship with you. Lord, and we can trust you. Lord, you never, ever let us down or fail us. God, we can rest in you today that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Um, God, we work hard. We, we work diligently, God, but ultimately you are the one who provides for us. So I pray for your people today that you will bless them, give them jobs, give them raises. God, uh, provide for their families more than they can even imagine in the name of Jesus. God bless you guys. Thank you. Hey, Sewell family. We'll be having Grove Track September 6th, immediately following the service. So if you or anybody you know haven't gone through Grove Track, it will be immediately following the service in the youth room, and we can't wait to see you there. We'll also be having our Crown Women's Conference December 3rd through the 5th. So if you or anybody you know has not gotten signed up, follow the link below to register. We can't wait to see you there. It's going to be amazing. Hey, Celebration of Life family. We are so excited that our C groups are gonna be back and meeting in person again. Wednesday night at 7 p.m. here up at the church. We're gonna start meeting. We're gonna have our men's group and our women's group and then all of our other C groups uh, for their information. Go online to colbaytown.com to see when and where they're meeting. But we're excited. We're ready to start meeting again as a family and as a church. So we will see y'all there. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise I'm so glad to be in Jesus' house, our house. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are excited uh, to have Brother Andre Bronkhorst with us all the way from South Africa. Can we give him a hand today? Come on, Brother Andre. We love him. He's been here many, many times. How many, how many out here have never heard Brother Andre? Oh, you're in for a great treat today. It's going to be awesome. Mighty man of God, prophetic, mighty prophet of God. And uh, we're just so honored to have him. He's got a very busy schedule, and we're honored to, that he's allowed to be able to come and, and just minister to us. And so, Brother Andre, we love you. We reverence you. Have your way. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Andre. What's yours? <laughs> Thank you, Jack. <laughs> it's a blessing to be with you this morning. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, what's happening, I'm from South Africa. South Africa is currently still in a, in a lockdown. Everything is locked down and shut. No one can travel or leave. Um, and uh, I was scheduled to be here earlier this year in March in the U.S., um, but I couldn't get out. And then uh, I was scheduled again to be here now from, from July. And uh, it's still shut. Um, uh, no one can travel you know, between states. Um, still limited, everything is still closed. Churches are limited to 50 people in a room. doesn't matter the size of the church. And uh, um, I prayed and I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Um, there's no way that I can fly. I cannot get out. And uh, God gave me a scripture in Mark 16, 15 that says, go. And uh, so uh, I just uh, took that and I said, okay, I'm going to try it. And so friends of mine uh, in Orlando, they, uh, they have a plane and they took medical aid to uh, Zambia and uh, they heard that I wanted to get out of South Africa and so they said, well, you can, you can get on the cargo plane with us to, to come back if you want to. And uh, so I said, well, I'll, I'll try that. Um, I, I packed a, a backpack and I went to the, to the airport. The airport was shut, so I had to go directly to the plane and uh, um, I didn't think they're going to allow me to get on the plane, so I told my wife to stay close by. And I mean, if they, the worst that can happen to me is they can send me back. So I said to her, just stay close by. If they send me back, just come and pick me up again and we can go home. And uh, so I went to the plane and boarded the plane, and there was no trouble, nothing, and I, we took off. Uh, we landed in four different nations. We landed up in Africa in a place called Doha, and then in Dubai, and then the only international airport that's open in the U.S. currently for international visitors is Chicago. 
And so we arrived in Chicago. So it was a, just over two and a half days journey to get here. Um, but uh, I believe that this is a critical time for America. It's a critical time, uh, the time that we're in right now. I'm not gonna speak a little bit about that, but I believe that God is busy doing something. We are right now, we are in one of the most challenging spiritual battles ever, right now. And it's time for the church to wake up because nothing is gonna change until the children of God and sons and daughters of God arise and do something about it. So I'm so grateful for Pastor Kelly that's, that's praying and that's doing something. I mean, the prayer movement that she's leading and many other people in America, it's amazing to see that someone is, is recognizing it or sensing it in the spirit and they're doing something about it. And so this is not a time, not a time to be a spectator. This is a time to be a participator, to get involved and to get, in, get connected however way you can. Get involved, get connected. Um, God's busy doing something. And so um, it was a bumpy ride in the, in the cargo plane, only has eight seats on. Uh, they, there was no cargo, they dropped it in South Africa. And so when we arrived, I said to the guys on the plane, I said, listen, do you think it's possible for my wife and children to get on the same plane? And they said, yes, no, we're gonna be back in South Africa in two weeks, they can get on. And so uh, um, last Sunday, two Sundays ago, um, I got them cleared by the health department to fly and uh, I was preaching in Augusta, Georgia, Sunday morning, and as I preached, my wife sent me a text message, government just removed them from the plane, my wife and, and two boys. Um, so they removed them, and I said to, uh, I prayed, and the church prayed with us, and we said, well, we're not gonna take this, we're gonna, we're gonna find a way. You know, the challenge with children of God is that they knock on a door, and when they don't give, get an answer, they give up. They, they take it as a, as a no from God. And so we just kept on knocking, knocking, knocking. Every door was closed, there was no answer. But then we found a door. Someone, I think it's the ninth person, ninth person that we spoke to that said, no, we can, we can make a plan. And so I got them back, to, Sunday they took them off the plane, I got them back on the plane on uh, Wednesday, on Tuesday. And so they arrived last Wednesday night in Orlando uh, <laughs> here with us. So... They are here, my wife and uh, um, my two sons, and uh, we'll stay here till uh, South Africa opens. They, um, they're not in a rush. Um, right now, globally, and I'm, when I speak to you this morning, I'm not speaking about America alone, I'm speaking about globally. Right now, globally, the hands of the church is tied. Yeah. Businesses are tied down. Yeah. And uh, government has no intention to, to loosen the hands of the church, yeah. globally. Let me tell you the truth. Government does not have answers in this time. They don't know. Our answers are going to come from God. We can't listen to other voices in this moment. We have to hear from God and say, Lord, what do you say? What do you want me to do? Um, let's be obedient to his voice in, in this season. And so they, uh, they arrived and they're here with me. And uh, I experienced something um, amazing when I arrived in, in Dallas. So I flew into Chicago. Then I went into to Dallas and um, I, I arrived in the hotel room. And as I arrived in the hotel room in, in Dallas, I smelled a spirit in the US, something that I've never smelled before. Uh, I smelled, now I've been, uh, the word says that, he says th that uh, we can train our senses. He said solid food is for the mature by constant use, have trained their senses to distinguish good from evil. And so I've been training my senses in, even in prayer. And, uh, I smelt this spirit, this thing in Dallas. Now, you need to understand that no spirit can enter the church. The church is holy ground. No spirit can enter this place. Your life is holy ground. No spirit can enter your life. It's holy ground. Your house is holy ground. Nothing can come close to you. But I smelt the spirit in Texas, in this, in this state. And so I went to Walmart. I bought an American flag went back to the hotel room, just placed it on the ground, and I started to pray, and pray, and pray, and pray. Yes. And um, I, bought a, I bought the flag, and I bought a, a lighter. And so the guy at the register looked at me, I said, no, no, it's not, um, the lighter is for the candle, I light a candle in, just when I pray. So it's, I'm not, and so I went back to the room, um, and I light the candle. Now normally when I pray, it's my senses, I light a vanilla candle. I dominate the room with a smell because when I pray and the Holy Spirit breaks it, the smell changes. 
And so I just started to pray and pray and pray. Two or three days, not consistently. Every time when I entered the room, just pray, pray, pray. That the spirit of America would be broken. Yeah. Just prayed and prayed and prayed. And I think third or fourth day, I smelled the smell changing. Just shifting, something moving. I'm sharing this with you today because I believe that God is calling this church. Yeah. He's calling you. Yeah. And I sense, I submit what I'm saying this morning completely under the leadership. But I sense that God is calling you as a church for extended meetings, extended prayer services, extended worship. Some of it will happen right here in this building and others are being sent out, not going out just praying for a day, but going out and praying until that spirit is broken, until it's lifted, okay? And so I wanna encourage you or invite you this morning. I sense from now up until November that God is calling you into a time of prayer. Whatever it means to you, whatever it looks like, whether it's extended prayer, extended worship, extended extended meetings. Because sometimes we knock and if there's no answer, we give up. But we have to continue to pray and pray and pray and pray until that spirit is broken. Worship and worship and worship and worship until it's broken. Just pushing through. Now, this word that I'm sharing with you right now, God is speaking to many people in America right now. Many churches. Many churches, many. This is not just one state or one place, but this spirit needs to be broken over this state. And that's why I'm saying to you that this is one of the most critical times that we're in right now. You know, we're so focused on the natural, where God is so focused and he prioritizes the spirit. When we touch people, we touch them in the natural, but when God touches you, it's in the spirit. It's something that has, that's connected to eternity. And we so focus on the well-being of ourselves uh, in the natural. Yet there's an everlasting life that's waiting after this, that's for eternity. And I'm here this morning to say to you that, that eternity, there's people's lives right now, the, the balance of their souls are hanging in the air between life and death. Not natural life and death, their spirit. It's an everlasting life. And God is calling the church globally, not just in America, globally. He's calling us to extend the times of prayer to push through until it's lifted, yeah. until it's broken. And so this morning I'm here um, uh, with a mandate to call you as a church, as Celebration of Life Church, to say to you that God is calling you. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what, what's possible for you, but you need to sit down and plan. This is a critical time a critical time globally. Whatever happens in America from now till November will affect the world. The world. It's a, it, there's an urgency in my spirit. I mean, we cannot play anymore. There must be an urgency to say, God, I'm shifting my will and my plans aside. What do you need me to do? What is your plan in this season for us? I told the churches in South Africa I said to them that the time is coming where you will reopen, and when you reopen, you have to come back stronger than ever before. Yeah. What does this mean? It means, it means that you need to come back as a church with everything that you have, yeah, with all your resources, yeah. with all your finances, yes, yeah. with everything that you, can, that you can throw. Don't think about 2021, because if God doesn't move now, there's no 2021. Yeah. It's a critical time. I'm going to say this again. Your life is holy ground. This church is holy ground. And so don't be full of fear this morning. I'm not talking about the war that's in here, but that's out there. Because you may have peace upon your life, but God's busy doing something in the atmosphere. And there is a battle right now. There is a battle. There's a battle. Now in Genesis, it says, he says, God made us in his image and his likeness. The reason why demons hate you is because you are made in his image. You're made in his likeness. And that is what they hate. Now, I want to make it clear this morning, demons are not afraid of you. But they are afraid of the revelation that you carry of Christ in you. That's what they're afraid of. And once we take that step of faith and we start to act in that authority and power, nothing is going to change. God's calling us in a time to step up. Amen? Let's pray together and we can get in the word. Thank you, Father, for your word this morning. 
Father, we honor you. Holy Spirit, we recognize you. There is such a strong, uh, tangible presence of the Holy Spirit in this room right now. We notice you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. We are dependent on you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and lead every person. Lead me, lead us, lead the leadership. Guide us in what we need to do in this season. What is important to you? Father, we surrender our will and our plans, our dreams, our visions. And Father, we take up the call that you have for us. I pray for every family in this room. I declare that they will become a mighty weapon in the kingdom of God. A mighty weapon, a powerful weapon that will pierce darkness wherever they go and wherever they move in this season. Father, we come against the spirit right now. I declare it has no right in this region, in this area, or in the state of Texas. I command the spirit to leave. It has no, no place among us. Father, we bring this nation before you right now. And we declare, Father, that you will be victorious. And Father, right now, spiritually, I call up all the intercessors. I call them up. I call the guard, the new guard, to stand up and start to function in the authority and the power that you have given them in this season. I declare that in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever there's a residue of man, people forget the spirit. Wherever there's a residue of the spirit, people forget the man. We are here this morning to leave a residue of the Holy Spirit upon your life. This is what this church is about. I have a message specifically that I want, want to preach. Um, God gave me a specific mandate. And as I got ready this morning to preach that message, God says, no, no, no. This is what I'm doing with celebration right now. I am pouring out my spirit on this church right now. This is what I'm doing here. And so this morning, I come into the will and plan of God, what he's doing with you as a family. You are in a time of revival. It's very important for you to realize that, for everyone that's here to realize that this church is in a season of revival. That's what you're in right now. And so this is just the beginning of it. There's a lot of things that needs to be released, and we're going to pray for that later today, but there's a release that needs to come. The revival is here, but God wants to release it. Release it, release it, release it. He wants to let it flow out, not just be contained in one building or one place this morning. He wants to bring a release. Amen? Amen. You're very serious this morning. Everyone is. <laughs> Amen. So, celebration, uh, church, uh, um, celebration of life, you're experiencing a move of the Holy Spirit right now, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God's busy pouring out His Spirit right now on you. And there's a residue upon every person that's here of the Holy Spirit, the work of God in your life. I want to say to the business people that's in this room, God's about, is busy penetrating the marketplace. Penetrating the marketplace. You're going, to see one, you're going to see some of the biggest financial shifts that's going to take place in this season where God's going to shift the wealth of the wicked. We're in this shift right now. In this shift. But for that to happen, God needs to position and prepare his business people, his kings. He needs to prepare you. God is busy doing a new thing. You need to understand this. Don't think about copying the old. You're still looking at your business and thinking, well, God's doing a new thing. And in this new thing, I would rather be an amateur in the new than an expert in the old. And so we're entering uncharted territories we don't know what this looks like uh, because it's new now even in business God wants to come and do a new thing in your business don't limit God in your business because he is setting you up geographically exactly where he wants you to be strategically for this season that we are in amen okay we have a lot of stuff to cover this morning let's go um, Luke 15 11 what's happening right now in the earth globally Every year, January, I wait on God and I get a word for us as a family. I don't necessarily wait on God to get a word for a nation, South Africa or America. I, lose, I leave that for the false prophets. They can get a word for that. I get a word for us as a family. Because God wants to speak to you first as a family before he can speak to you uh, as a nation. Amen? And so I waited on God and he gave me a word for our family in January. And when he gave me this word, God said to me the following thing. I wrote this, I wrote all of this down. He said, Andre, um, th this is the word, but the, this word is a strategy. Yeah. 
2020, I'm giving my people strategies. Strategies. And how you apply this strategy will determine the level of victory that you'll have in 2020, in this year. In this year. Now, we're still in 2020. <laughs> we're still in this year. And this morning, I'm sharing a prophetic word with you, but this prophetic word is becoming a, will become a strategy to you to be more effective in business and in the church in this season. It is critical for us right now. I did a big conference in our church January. We always do a conference, and I spoke about this. But if I knew what was about to happen, I would have spoken about it with a lot more boldness. Sometimes we don't realize when God speaks to us, we don't realize how vital it is. It seems small or insignificant until the storm comes. Then you realize that God has been preparing you for that storm to be able to stand in that storm and to go through it. Now, God did not promise us life, a life without storms. In fact, he said in this life you'll have many storms. But I believe that God is teaching us strategically to stand in storms. Now, we are facing a storm right now, but I'm here this morning and I have to be truthful to you. There's two more coming. I'm not talking about natural things. There's two more storms that's coming. And God is preparing us to stand in these storms. And I believe that a lot of us have experienced that even in the storm right now, that, that after the storm, you're in a much better condition than you've been before the storm. <laughs> Financially, health-wise, that in the storm, that God is using that storm to promote you, to grow you, to strengthen you, to multiply your life in that. And this is what he's doing in this time. He's positioning us to be effective. And I'm going to give you three simple tools this morning to navigate in your storm, um, to come through, to stand in the storm and not to be touched. So right now we are experiencing shakings. January, God said to me, this year, 2020, you will experience three different shakings. You will experience a shaking in health. You will experience a shaking in the economy globally. You will experience a shaking, a religious shaking. We've experienced a health shaking. We've experienced the economy being shaken. But I believe that from now till November that we're going to experience a religious shaking. What is this religious shaking? This is not one religion standing up against one another. This is Christians standing up against Christians. Blaming one another. And when God spoke to me about this, he said, Andre... You will have no part in this. You will not speak against any man or woman of God. You will have no part there. Don't don't open up your mouth in this shaking. And you're going to see in the next couple of months how leaders are going to blame one another. How churches are going to blame one another because they don't have answers. It's a religious shaking that's busy taking place. God is shaking the church globally. Now, all three of these shakings that I'm speaking about right now are natural shakings. It's natural things that's being shaken. And so, if your life is built in the spirit, you won't experience anything. But if if your entire life is only built in the natural, it will be massive shakings to you. It might seem that your whole world is falling apart. (laughs) So God is teaching us to walk in the spirit and to live in the spirit and to be in the spirit. He's teaching us to live that way. So there's a religious shaking that's happening. What is this? The religious shaking that's taking place is breaking the mold that religion has over people. Breaking that mold. There's a shaking that's taking place and God is not delivering people um, from Satan in their lives. He's delivering people from people. There's some people that are so controlled by others, their opinion of you, their opinion of what you should do, what the church should do, and God is breaking that religious mold completely. He's shaking that completely. There's many churches that are not going to reopen. They're just not going to open. It's religious institutions. It's people that have been building their own kingdoms. They don't have a heart for people. They don't care about the souls. Let me tell you the truth this morning. The churches that are opening right now are churches who are concerned about souls. Because if you're concerned about a soul, you don't mind losing your own life. It's not about your safety anymore. 
It's not about your will or what you like. It's about there's people out there and they need the word. Someone's asked me, uh, 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 so how is the online church going to look like in the future? Well, there's going to be no online church because God is calling the believers to come together. There's no such thing as online church. We can have online church, we can do that, but it's impossible for impartation to happen online. It's impossible. But I want to ask the church something this morning, and I'm saying to online churches this. What are people experiencing in your meeting that they cannot get online? Because if they don't get anything in the meeting, then they don't have to come back to church. If there's no move of the spirit, if there's no laying on hands, if there's no empowerment that's taking place in the building, then it'll be an online church. And so God is bringing back the, church, the power to the church. Yes, we'll be online, but there's something about the gathering. There's something about this morning just to be in the worship. I mean, just being here and worshiping God, not, no, no other focus. There's something about that, that that no online experience can replace. God will use it, but he needs the people to gather. He needs us to come together. It's critical for this time. Amen. Okay, I have to move fast. <laughs> Let's go. Luke 15, 11. This is the word that God gave me uh, as a family for this year. Luke 15, 11. It starts, it says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. Most of you know the scripture, and I want you to understand that the entire Old Testament is about a king and servants. But the entire New Testament is about a father and a son, a father and a daughter. Every story um, or parable um, resembles that. And so when we read Luke 15, 11, this is not just the father, this is the father God. Yes. We can pick up his character in this, in Luke 15, 11. And so Luke 15 is not about the son, it's about the father. The hero in Luke 15 is not the son. The hero is the father. So as we read this this morning, I want you to, to, to focus on the father. Not, you know, if I had to give it a title, I would say the great father and the two idiot sons. That's how I would <laughs> title it. Because it's not about them, it's the father Amen. and how he acts and how he responds in this situation. Amen? That's true. That's true. Luke 15, 11. Jesus considered there was a man who had two sons. We know the story. Son comes to the father, he says, listen, dad, I want to leave. Um, I want to go. Now, in Israel culture, this is not a strange thing because in Israel, young people receive their inheritance in the beginning of their life, not the end. It's completely normal for a son to come and say, dad, give him my inheritance. That's how they function. Uh, when, I, when I say the word inheritance in Israel, and I say it in America, it has two different meanings. Because American mindset believes it's something that you get at the end of your life. Where in Israel, they, they know it's the beginning of their life. And that's why when we say that Jesus is our inheritance, we don't know what it means. Because we're expecting heaven one day at the end, yet we can be in heaven right now. Yet we can experience him right now. It's the beginning of our lives we get to walk with him. And so the son comes, he says, I want my inheritance. Now, in South Africa, when... A father has children in his home and he pays their studies, uh, um, uh, all their needs, their car, their food. A father would normally say, listen, as long as you're in this house and I pay the bills, you will abide to the rules. That's how it works in South Africa. A little bit of controlling over the children. They don't really have free will or can make decisions. So here now, the son comes to the father and he says, give me my inheritance. What is he saying? He's saying, I want to be in charge of my life. Give me the money so I can make my own decisions and do whatever I will. And here the father does that. He says, okay, here it is. And this is, this is a father. He positions the son with authority and finances to have free will. God gives us free will. He blesses your business without, without you tithing yet. He blesses that business. <laughs> he empowers you to go out. He gives you that inheritance. He says, go. And so the son leaves the house. But this is something that you have to remember this morning. Even though the son left the house, the father's heart never left him. Right. You see, when we send people away, we shut the door. Yeah. We make it impossible for them to return. Yeah. Wow. I'm talking about South Africa, not America. 
So we will say to our children, yes, you can go, but, but when you leave this house, I'm not funding your life anymore. I'm not funding your plans. When you, as long as you stay here, I'll pay the bills, but when you choose to leave, you're on your own. And so go and you can never come back because you've, you've chosen to walk out. So the son leaves. He makes a lot of mistakes. And then he comes to his senses. I believe that what brought the son to his senses was the Holy Spirit. Because God has given us his Holy Spirit to continually remind us of the will and plan that the Father has for us. There's times in your life where you're gonna do things and there's gonna be a voice inside you that says, this is not it. There's something far greater that God has for you. And so there's a voice in us continually. The Spirit didn't leave the Son. The, The Holy Spirit continually reminds him, reminds him of the will that the Father has for his life. And so now... The son decides to return. In Luke um, 15, 22, the son decides to return. Now, I want to speak to you this morning quickly about true repentance. The son decides in, uh, um, in that state, he says to himself, if I can just go back and be a servant in the house, um, it's, I'll, be, I'll live in better conditions. And so the son decides that he will come back and he's willing just to be a servant. True repentance is the willingness to start over. See, a lot of people want to repent, but they want to come back and they want to demand things. I want to be back in that position. True repentance is the willingness to say, I'll I'll start over. And so the son comes back. He's ready to come and repent. He's ready to speak to the father about all his sins. And what's amazing to me is (laughs) God is not an American father or a South African father. Because he doesn't sit in, a, in his house and wait for his son to come all the way to the front door and knock and knock and knock and make him feel bad and then come out. No, he's waiting for him. He's expecting his return. He's waiting for him to come back. And then when he sees him from afar, he runs towards him. He meets him halfway. He makes, he makes the whole repentance process easy. Meets him halfway and says, okay, And the son was willing to repent, but I don't believe that the son really got a chance to repent. Because he came, and as he started to repent, immediately the restoration process started. He was willing to, but immediately, Luke uh, Luke 15, 22, I want you to write down these three things. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best rope and put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. I want you to write down these three things, rope, ring, and sandals. It's a strategy for 2020. Rope, ring, and sandals. Immediately, the father says, bring, bring the best rope for him. There's a difference between a rope of a servant and a son. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. He's willing just to be a servant. And the difference between the rope of a servant and a son is authority. Mm. Wow. And so immediately, the father says, bring the best rope for him. And immediately, the father reinstates his authority. Immediately, puts him back in his position. He's willing just to be a servant, but he puts him back in his position. I believe that our authority in 2020 is going to be critical. God is giving us authority in this season. Not the pastor's authority, not the prophet's authority. There's some storms that cannot wait till next Sunday. There's some things that you're gonna have to confront those things. When that storm comes, you're going to have to stand in the authority that God has given you, and you're going to have to rebuke that storm. You're going to have to speak against it right there. You're going to have to confront it. So God is giving us authority, every believer, authority in 2020 to stand against these storms and challenges that we're facing. And every person should exercise that authority. Now, there's no difference in authority in a 10-year-old and a 60-year-old. When God gives authority, he gives authority. Children can function that same authority. So immediately the father reinstates his authority. He gives him authority again. And then he says, bring a ring for his finger. A ring resembles covenant. When you you, uh, marry your wife or husband, you give them a ring as a symbol that you're entering a covenant with them. Now, let me explain the difference between uh, works and covenant. As long as you date a person, you have to work that relationship. Yeah. 
You have to buy flowers, chocolates, you have to be nice, you have to do things because they can change their mind at any point. And so you work that relationship because you're not in covenant yet, okay? And so then you get married, but now, now you enter covenant. Remember this, covenant is above works. So today, I don't have to buy flowers or coffee or chocolates. My wife is not going to divorce me if I don't do it because we have entered the covenant now. I'm still doing that, but yet our relationship is not dependent on works anymore. The father is very strategic. You see, the son, the son left the house. When the son left, someone else had to do his job. Servants, the other son, and they've been working the land. And so they, they're looking at this restoration process and the servants can't wait for the son to come back into the house because they want to judge him. They want to say, where have you been while we've worked the land? While we've been laboring, where have you been? And so the father strategically puts him back into covenant. Covenant is above works and now the servants has nothing on him. Nothing. He just elevates him. He's in covenant. It's not dependent on his works anymore because he's in covenant with the Father. And then he put sandals on his feet. I believe that the sandals represents that we are qualified. When God sent, when Jesus sent the disciples out, he said, only take the sandals on your feet. What is he saying? He's saying, I've qualified you for the job. I believe that in this season that we're in right now, three things that's critical is the authority that God has given us, the fact that we are in covenant with God, and the fact that we are qualified for it. Yeah, so good. These are the three areas where we are being attacked right now. Your authority is going to be attacked. And that's why I'm saying to you that you're going to have to stand up in your authority. Not someone else. You are going to have to stand up and take authority. And then secondly, covenant is going to be attacked. What, how is covenant attacked? Through works. Through works. Immediately, you see, we cannot, as sons and daughters of God, we cannot be dependent on our works because we are in covenant. And in business, you see, when you are in covenant, your business can be shut down for six months, but it can still prosper because you're in covenant. You cannot just look at works. You can't look at income, out, uh, input, output, two plus two is four. When you're in covenant, God works it out. You are in a completely different place. I'm going to touch that now. And then qualified. I believe now the third attack that we're in right now, from now till November, is the enemy is going to challenge the fact that you are qualified or not. The enemy is going to come against you and say, you can do it. You're not the right person. People ask me today, this year we celebrate 20 years of ministry. They ask me, Andre, how does it feel to be in 20 years from ministry, the first year that you started up until now, how does it feel? Obviously, you, were, uh, you didn't have confidence in the first year. Um, you were anxious and full of fear. How does it feel now? And I'm saying to them, after 20 years, it feels to me now that I know less than when I started. But then I remembered when, when no one saw me, God put his hand upon my life. And he said, I qualify you. And so today I can do what I do, not because I have people's approval, but because God has qualified me. He sent me. He said, you're the man for the job. I want to speak to you about this this morning. Every person in this room, let me be honest with you. Superman is not coming. Batman is not coming. No, there's no help coming. Nothing. You're it. God has qualified you. Nothing's going to show up. There's no angels that's going to show up. There's angels, but God still chooses to use his people. So you are still, there's no angel that's going to do it for you. You, You're the person that God has called in this season. Okay, just look to the person next to you this morning and say, you're the one that I've been waiting for. (laughs) You might feel unqualified this morning. You might feel guilty of what has happened in the past. Hear this morning that God is qualifying you. He has qualified you. He has given you authority. You have the same authority to speak to that storm than I have or pastors or leadership have. 
You have the authority this morning. Amen? Amen. Genesis chapter 13, verse 9. I'm ending with this. Genesis chapter 13, verse 9. I want to stand still on covenant just a little bit. And this morning, I pray that God would give you revelation on covenant, of what covenant really is. We don't have, we have so little on covenant. We have a covenant with God. And that covenant is above works, what we can do for him. It's above that. It's above how much we can pray or if you need to understand when I say God's calling you to extend the time of prayer and worship, I'm not referring to works. I'm talking about as we worship that God breaks something in the spirit. It's a strategy, it's a tool, it's a weapon that is giving us to how to address this thing in the spirit. But it's not how much we do it. It's not our ability or our works. It's a spiritual thing. We are in a covenant right now with God. And in Genesis 13 verse 9, we see Abraham function in covenant. Now you can only function in covenant the way that Abraham does if you have a revelation of covenant. And so in Genesis 13 verse 9, God speaks to Abraham. He says, Abraham, it's time for you to part your ways with Lot. This partnership needs to break. In 2020, this year, God is releasing you from ungodly partnerships. God's breaking partnerships this year. In business, in ministry, he's breaking partnerships. There's people out there, they don't have the same heart that you have. Their focus is not the kingdom. And so God allowed it for a time, but now he's putting a stop to it this year. He's saying, I'm releasing you from any form of ungodly partnership, any form of partnership where they don't have the same focus that you have. Now, please, don't go back to your partner tomorrow and say, Andre said that we need to break this partnership. <laughs> I believe that God is doing it. He's setting you free from that. He's getting you to a place in your life where it just, there's no other way. Even in church. Yeah. Wow. There's partnership in churches that God is ending because they don't have the same heart. And I'm talking about the kingdom. Their heart is not to build the kingdom. They want to build their kingdom. They don't want to go out and do what God wants to do. He's breaking those partnerships. Yeah, yeah. This morning, I release you from any partnership in your life yeah. that is controlling you. Yeah. Any partnership that's delaying you or limiting you in what God has for your life. Yeah. I'm speaking over businesses today. A business partnership that, that, that is wicked. And I'm talking about the opposite of what God is. It's completely wicked on the other side. I'm releasing you from that partnership. God, God is going to be your partnership in this season. He's going to be your partner until he adds someone else, but he's going to be your partner in this season. So God says to Abraham, it's time to part your ways with Lot. Genesis 13 verse 9. He says, is the whole land before you, let's part company. Here's covenant. Abraham understands covenant. So he says to Lot, he says, Lot, we need to break this partnership. Here's covenant. Lot, you choose. You take the land on the left, and I'll take on the right. If you go to the right, I'll go left. You see, in 2020, God is not calling us to run after blessings. Lot is a person who runs from blessing to blessing to blessing, church to church to church, movement to movement to movement. And so, so Lot is looking at what looks more prosperous, and that's what he's going for. But Abraham understands covenant. And when you understand covenant, you know that the blessing of the Lord rests upon your life. Yes. And so Abraham says, you choose. Whatever you want, you go left, I'll go right. <laughs> and so Lot chooses the most prosperous land, the green land. Abraham takes the desert. But because the blessing of the Lord is upon his life, there's a little river that flows behind him. <laughs> and wherever he goes, the, the blessing goes. It starts to prosper. It starts to grow. Yes, Andre, but I don't see the breakthrough yet. Just stand a little bit longer. Just stand a little bit longer. In 2020, God is calling you. He's calling the blessing to rest upon your life. It might look like an area that's, that's, that's dead. But God says, go anyway. It might look like a business that no one can save. And God says, because you are in it. I will make it grow. Yes. I will bring life to it. I will bring life to that area. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, in 2020, 
the community where you, where you stay, where you live in, the house, the property value in that area will start to lift because you are there. In the natural, things will start to shift because the blessing of the Lord is upon your life and you carry the blessing of the Lord. God is not calling you. Now, you need to understand this. God is not calling you to run after blessings this year. It'll make you tired. He wants you to realize, just stand still and realize the blessing is resting upon your life. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's standing in the Spirit and just allowing that that Holy Spirit water to flow over you. And realizing that it's with you. You don't have to run to find it somewhere. That where you go, you will bring life. And that's why I'm saying to you this morning that you're standing on holy ground. Where you stand is holy. He's chosen to put you in covenant with him. And that covenant is above works. It's above what you can do. It's above your ability or your strength or or your talents or gifts. It's above that. You're in covenant with him. Yes. It's a higher rule that's there. I want to speak to you this morning briefly. You cannot leave this room today if you are not in covenant with God. Yes. Make sure, if you are unsure about this, what happens when you leave the kingdom of God? You lose authority. Yeah. That's what happens. The Father is, is, is still waiting for you to return and He's open any time for you to come back, but you're living a life without authority. That's the difference. And so this morning, if you are here and maybe a visitor, sorry um, if, it's, if, I'm, if it's too hard on you, <laughs> but I believe that you are at the right place this morning and God is calling you back. And I want to encourage you, this is the most important thing, is your soul. I want to encourage you this morning, if you're here, don't leave this place. There will be pastors and leadership afterwards to pray with you. But make sure that you leave this place and your authority is reinstated. Because there's a difference to pray with or without authority. Make sure that your covenant, that you're in covenant with him. Because that, that brings the blessing upon your life. Wherever you go, you take the blessing to that place. You can take it in that job. I want to say to you this morning that your business will not fail. It will grow, it will succeed, it will multiply. Every place in the word where Jesus speaks, he always speaks about multiplication, growth. You're not going to close, you're going to expand. It's not a time to, you see what's happening in the whole world right now, the whole world is contracting right now. They're saying, no, no, contract, no. This is a time to expand. It's a time to release. It's a time to go forth. This is the time that we're in right now. Yes, Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for every person here this morning. Father, this morning, I want to come and remind them this morning of the authority that's upon their life, of the covenant that they are in. And Father, also, that they are qualified, that you have qualified them to go out, whether it's ministry, whether it's business, to go out and to represent you out there. And this morning I declare over every one of them, I speak to the viewers right now, every one of you that's watching live right now, I declare that the blessing of the Lord is upon your life. The blessing of the Lord is resting upon you. Not because of what you've done, but because of what Jesus did. He restored covenant. He made it possible for us to get back into covenant with God again. And so today we're in covenant with him. And suddenly the blessing comes upon our lives. And that blessing fl flows through into our family, into people around us. It touches everything around us, that covenant. Father, I pray for revelation, revelation, that you would bring revelation forth to us. Let us understand covenant. I come against any demonic power that wants to attack people this morning, that wants to make them feel guilty. I come against orphan spirit that wants to make people feel unwelcome in your kingdom, unwelcome in the church, unwelcome. I declare this morning that you are welcome. As Jack said this morning, you're a son. There's a seat that's prepared for you at the table. 
You're not an orphan anymore. You are welcome in the kingdom of God. You are a critical part in the puzzle. You're a critical part. Your life is important. God has destined it for you to live in this time. There is something that you carry that needs to be deposited, that needs to be released. Father, I pray for your Holy Spirit on everyone right now. Thank you for your word. Acts 1 verse 8 that says that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Empower us, Holy Spirit. Empower us. I declare prophetically that this morning as people leave this room that they will be weaponized. That their words will be weaponized. That as they go out, that they will be equipped and ready to go out. I declare this morning that they will stand in storms. They will not, will not be driven, overwhelmed by fear or anxiety. They will stand in those storms. And in the midst of that storm, they will experience the blessing of the Lord. <laughs> the faithfulness of God in that storm. The Holy Spirit is ministering to people. I'm just going to give him some time. Just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. He's doing something in you right now that no man can do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see the Holy Spirit on people's lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see angels that's just moving through the building. Angels moving through. You'll feel the heat on your shoulder. I see angels standing with people right now. I see the heat. Just feel the heat on your shoulder. Angels putting their hands on you right now, just moving through this building. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father.